Hello, welcome and welcome back. This is Jacob and today we're gonna be looking at another module short story and in today's short story we're gonna feature the one for Fiamela, the recently recently released unit because yes, <laughs> of course, I had to get this one considering the story and everything and I did uh, for both her and uh, Mustima hoard a couple of modules just to open them up and see uh, at least see what the stories are. But both of these modules, pretty good, especially Mustima's. And uh, hers, Fiametta's, isn't <laughs> nothing to scoff at, considering it's a literal, hey, enemy, how about you lose 100 defense? <laughs> or rather, hey, enemy, how, how about I ignore 100 of your defense? I would like to imagine that the module <laughs> honestly just works by Fiametta looking uh, right in the eyes of the enemy and insulting them in uh, Latin. And the enemy gets so confused that they go, that they stop attacking and uh, go and um, try and translate the shit. Like I did for the freaking story when I was uh, narrating that part. <laughs> I had to stop and look at what the hell did she say and then I was like, ah, hmm, rosy language, nice. <laughs> Uh, I think I've said enough throughout the narration and uh, that kind of stuff, how much I appreciate this character, so I'll keep it brief here. Really like her, really like her backstory, all the baggage that came and was pretty well displayed throughout the story for her. Uh, the way she cares about her friends and everything and how much she... Uh, Put the blame on her and every on herself and all of that stuff. Very good, v very 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 good. Is all I can say. Pretty enjoyed the entire story and that very big moment. Slight spoiler for the story, obviously, if you haven't read it or uh, uh, seen it yet yourself, in any shape or form. The very moment where she uh, verbally explodes onto her uh, <laughs> pursuing target. <laughs> Ah, that was, that was a beautiful moment. Uh, as a unit, usually I also talk about that for a bit, but uh, right now I can't really say much considering she has recently been re released and I have very little played around uh, with her outside of the very same stages I used to grind out the invent on. And uh, all I can say is, uh, you press button, you win. <laughs> That's... I guess pretty much pretty much the description that bombardment skill is uh very funny to look at i'm not gonna lie just keep her just keep her healthy and uh that's gonna be it uh the only other thing i will say uh this story works pretty well in tandem with both the guiding ahead story and um the module story i mean with the guiding ahead story and with the operator record so if you haven't seen it yet and are listening to this, uh, after this video is done, go and watch either for yourself if you have Fiametta and she's 50% E2. Uh, it's a very well... <laughs> I, I love I love how that um, Operator Records story goes. It's pretty much an extra epilogue on top of the main story because it's dealing mostly with her uh, preparing and leaving for, for Rhode Island with the rest of the team that is heading towards there, plus uh, she has a very nice moment with her foster parent, <laughs> with Grandpapa, <laughs> with G Grandpapa Sancta, which is uh, a very wholesome moment. That that tugged on my heartstrings. That, that, was, that was a very, very nice operator record. And it was very nice because it showed, compared to the main story, which shows her, well, main story, compared to Guide Ahead, Show, which shows her mostly obviously pissed off because of obvious reasons. This one shows her in another light because it takes place after everything is done and uh, you would guess she would feel a bit more relieved now or at least uh, got a lot of the baggage off her shoulders. But yeah, it's very wholesome. She's very chill and even joking around. It's, uh, it's great. It's, gr it's a great read. I highly recommend it. But in today's story, like I said, uh, we're gonna take a look at a bit of the past and a bit of the future. Or rather, not future, a bit of the actual story. <laughs> You'll see why. 
Uh, as for the module design, usually I also talk about this, but what can I say? I guess this is the uh, uh, 4th of July uh, celebration kit, Sancti edition. Uh, but in all realness, we have kinetic explosives. I'm guessing these are incendiaries. Uh, I guess these are potentially duds, just like pressure waves. I'm guessing. But these, oh my god, what the hell is this? Why do these have spikes? What the hell is up with this shit? I don't want, no, actually, I don't want to know. I do not want to know. This is some, uh, it's probably not armor piercing. This is pretty much just there to shred any tissue apart. Whatever this freaking thing is. This is just scary to look at. Jesus Christ. No wonder she yelled at uh, Ando and what she yelled at him. That's that second second Latin sentence I'm talking about. <laughs> Poor Ando. <Anduin. laughs> uh, anyway. The module title and the story title would be Outlaw Special Ammunition Surplus. And the story goes as follow. It was a beautiful sunny afternoon years past when the old man pushed a box before the still young Liberi girl. She hadn't even had time to wipe the soot off her face. She'd never had the finest control over firearms, though the scent of her age used guns as natural as their own limbs. Fia, I'm not going to say it's just a racial gulf or whatever to try to comfort you, and I'm not going to proclaim that wielding guns is a Sancta exclusive glory, like some cardinals. Practice will yield results, and you've as good as brushed shoulders with those results, even if it's not gone, uh, even if it's not gone how you'd want. But there's still a different way, or maybe you could say a different tool that could help you move forward. This box holds something one of my mechanic tutors left to me. He's not coming back to Laterano ever. He violated the law. But child, law is not our everything. Now, don't look at me like that. Yes, you might go big whoop, but nobody would say uh, our everything ends at food and water either, right? They're just things we're for forced to rely on to survive. There's always something that transcends the law, sits beyond it, and everyone has a different idea of what it is. Some call it righteousness, some call it sensibility, and some call it a vague hope. Don't panic, and don't worry. There will be times when wanting to do something will make you unstoppable. The Liberi is no longer a girl. She's been more places than can be imagined, and seen more sights than can be believed. But afternoons in Laterano will never change. The sun is as fine and beautiful as ever. These two weapons have been by her side for longer than can be described. They have ensured her safety through danger, and mercilessly shot down the absurd aspirations of others. She carefully cleans the grime from her old friends, oils them, inspects the pressure in every last piece of ammo, and affirms again and again their ordering by type. She'll soon face her pursuer, her enemy of eight years, and there's no such thing as being overly prepared. There is always something that transcends the law. There is no vengeance in her heart, and no pity either. Only this. What must be settled will be settled, and those who must bear the cost will pay the price. She understands. This is an obsession, nothing more. She slots the final shell into her magazine. So yeah, the story in short is pretty much a peek in her past uh, when she had a nice little moment, a <laughs> nice little moment, uh, but yeah, a nice little moment with her foster grandparent. The, uh, oh god, what was his name again? Uh, 
He is a Sancta. He is one of the Gun Knights. Uh, shit. Patriciona? Was that, was that it? Shit. I forgot. I'm so bad with names. But anyway. Uh, but yeah, a nice little moment with her uh, foster, foster grandparent. Uh, giving her the very same tools she uses all the way up until today. And then we fast forward to what is more than likely the very, very last moments before she confronts Endoin in that uh, bit during uh, stage 8. But yeah, very, very, very nice uh, little story. Well, but yeah. Uh, anyway, this will be potentially the, again, last module story for a while, because after, <laughs> oh Jesus Christ, after Mostima and her, I'm pretty much out of uh, modules yet again. I think I have like two. So it's, it's going to be a while until I can post another one. Probably like two weeks or something. But not saying there is not enough uh, stuff to cover. Uh, as a short little thing, uh, there will be probably in the next like couple of hours going to be the next uh, or rather currently last operator record that is available, which is for Murph. Uh, I didn't have her on 50%, otherwise that would have been already uploaded. So had to wait until her trust got all the way up to 50 to uh, record that. So that will be going live in a couple of hours. And after that, uh, we'll see what comes next week. But before that, uh, now that now that I'm done with narrating a bunch of stuff here for the side story and the two modules right now, I'll be going back to the main story, continuing through chapter seven, or rather episode seven. I don't know why they call them episodes. Could have just called them chapters, really. It's so much easier. Everybody else calls it chapter and chapter and chapter. Uh, but yeah. This will be it for today. So, hopefully everybody has enjoyed this little story. Uh, for people who have gotten Fiametta, congrats. Hope you are enjoying a uh, little Phoenix girl, <laughs> demolishing and bombarding everything in front of her. And uh, for people who are still pulling and uh, are trying, good luck. I hope you get her. Uh, but... For now, I hope you have a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video. Until then, bye-bye.